I'm Ted Berg, and this is the Baseball Show presented by Caesars Atlantic City. Joining us today via Skype to talk Terry Collins is Patrick Flood, who writes for the SNY.TV blog network at patrickfloodblog.com. Patrick, we brought this up on the Mostly Mets podcast last night, and we talked a little bit about it. One of the, I guess, baffling things about Terry Collins and his, his managing this year has been the use of Francisco Rodriguez in terms of that games finished option that, that just about everybody knows about and, and no one stops talking about. Yes, everyone talks about the, uh, the games finished option where he is his uh, $17 million for next year. Will vest if he gets to whatever it is, 55 or 60. Um, I don't even remember anymore. But it's 55. Uh, I get we talked about this during the podcast, and uh, my take on it is uh, as frustrating as it is as a Mets fan. Maybe it's not something you want your manager thinking about uh, people's vesting options and things like that. Yeah, and 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 you know Toby Toby Hyde, who was on the podcast as well, brought us some good points. And you know it is it has to be you know in some de- to some degree a manager's job to carry out organizational strategy. And we don't know, you know, what the organization is thinking in terms of K-Rod. But, you know, it's also the manager's job to keep his players happy. And and obviously K-Rod is a guy who likes work. He likes work late in games. And, you know, I mean, if, if the Mets, if no one has stopped Collins yet, from using K-Rod in, in certain situations late in games, you know, games finish situations, even when they're not save opportunities, then you've got to think, you know, Sandy Alderson has some sort of reason, whether it's, you know, a pending trade, whether it's, you know, not wanting to get into hot water with, with the Players Association. Uh, you, you almost have to assume something's happening here that, that's, you know, more than just, you know, risking that huge vesting option for games like the one in Chicago when when uh, Rodriguez came in down six runs. Right. You, you hope that there is a, a plan. And with this, this front office, uh, my take is that you do think that they have a plan and there's some reason. Whether it's um, trading him would be, would be one thing. If they send him off to a team that already has a closer, um, that team wouldn't have to worry so much about his option vesting because he won't be finishing games. Um, and then the Mets don't have to worry about paying him, you know, however much money next year to be a closer, which is probably not a good investment. And, you know, we look at Collins, and I think fans of all 30 teams in baseball quibble with their manager. I don't think you'd find a fan anywhere who'd say, oh, this guy is the guy, he's a genius, and I love him. But Collins, uh, early on, it seemed to be drawing a lot of comparisons to Jerry Manuel, people saying, oh, it's more of the same with this guy, the bunting, you know, the, the in-game strategy, it's, it's all wrong. And really, lately, it, it hasn't been that way. Exactly. I actually, uh, I, I like the way Terry Collins uses bunts, if I can go that far, which is surprising. I know I, I tend to lean. I thought you were cool, Patrick. Yeah, I, well, I know. No, the... Uh, I tend to lean more towards sabermetrics, as you know. I think you do too on your blog. Um, and generally, the sabermetric take has been bunting is bad. Um, you see that all the time. But actually, a couple of weeks ago, I went back through. Uh, I'm going to grab this book here. I have a copy of the book, which is written by prominent saber magician Tom Tango and uh, a couple other guys. It's very nerdy. Don't bring it to the beach. People kick sand in your face. But um, what what it, it has an improvised bunt the play that we always complain about. You know, you have a runner on first base, you move over to second. That does cost your team runs. It's not a good play. It reduces your chance of scoring runs. You'll lose games if you do it all the time. But the actual play of bunting, because there are other things that happen. If you drop down a bunt, sometimes you beat it out. Sometimes the defense throws the ball away. And if you threaten to bunt, which is the thing Terry Gollins has done the most that I do like, is that you'll see some guy square up, um, you know, on the first pitch, then pull back and swing away. He's moved the defense around a little bit and increased his hitter's chance of getting a hit and moving runners over, and that's what I like. And I think you've got to give Collins credit, and again, this gets into more nebulous territory that that nerds like us tend to struggle with, right? But I think you've got to credit Collins for the way he's managed the club. It, it really seems like he's getting the best possible performance out of, you know, almost every guy on the team. Uh, there are a couple of notable exceptions there, but but it certainly seems like they're playing hard for him, like they're, they're playing good baseball, and like he's managing the players he has as best as he can. Exactly. Actually, specifically, I like the way he's handled Jason Bay this season. Um, you notice even when Jason Bay was going really terribly a couple weeks ago, 
not that he's going that much better now, um, but every day he would come out and he'd say, Jason Bay is my left fielder, Jason Bay is my left fielder, even on days when he would bench Jason Bay. He, he, there was sort of like a couple-week period where Jason Bay was maybe playing, you know, two out of every three games, and every day Tarek Collins would be like, you know, no, he's the left fielder, even though he really wasn't, which I think did a good job of sort of taking pressure off Bay where he doesn't have the reporters ask him every day, how does it feel to be benched? Um, and I feel like he handled that well. And you also have a team without Davis and Wright and uh, Santana and Chris Young is out and all those players and there's a lot of fill-ins and they're still just a, their game over 500 now. So I think you definitely have to give credit to Derry Collins for all that. Right, one of the things is, you know, so many people killed Jerry Manuel for, and I think to some extent rightfully so, was throwing his players under the bus, often in, in sort of seeming to aggrandize himself. And Collins has taken just about every measure possible to protect his players at every step of the way. I remember one time really early in the season, Daniel Murphy made that horrendous base running mistake and, and didn't play the next day. And I, Collins pinch hit Chin Lung Hu, and it seemed you know, an awful decision. And, you know, he defended it by saying it was, a, it was a matchup move. And Murphy was on the bench. And, and you know, and I think people killed him for the matchup move. But, you know, I, I wondered at the time, and, and it seems knowing Collins now, and again, you know, this is speculation, but it seems like maybe that was something Collins was doing, you know, to, to keep Murphy out of that game because of the base running thing, but it's not something Collins would ever say to the press, no, not something Collins would ever make public, that he was benching Murphy because of that play. Exactly. He's, he's not the type to uh, ever say anything negative in the press about any of his players, no matter how bad they're going, or even somebody like Daniel Murphy, who tends to make a lot of base running errors and mental mistakes and that sort of thing. Um, I like that. It's definitely a contrast to the way sort of Jerry Manuel is doing things um, recently around here. Uh, then again, it might just be really easy for any manager to look great after Jerry Manuel. Um, but we like this guy. Yeah, no, I do genuinely like Terry Collins, too. It's not just a comparison thing. I, I mean, who knew? Yeah, yeah. Patrick, thanks so much. Thanks, Ted. Be sure to check out the Mostly Mets podcast, which has a new episode rolling out today on Patrick's site, as well as tedquarters.net and metsminorleagueblog.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.